In 10.3 now, we're going to explore using chords and using them to ident identify arc lengths, uh, side lengths, um, just lots of things that we're going to do with chords and look at a lot of theorems with chords. Um, so the first theorem we're going to attack or approach is uh, theorem 10.6. Again, the number doesn't mean anything, but um, congruent corresponding chords theorem. And it says that if you happen to have either be in the same circle or in congruent circles. Remember that equal circles, uh, circles with the same radius are treated as if they were the same circle. So everything applies. Um, and so if you have a same circle or congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. And so that means you can do this backwards. What it's saying is, is that if these two chords, for example here, chord A, B, and CD, if those two chords are congruent, then these corresponding arcs, the arcs form, these minor arcs that are formed by those chords, these minor arcs are also going to be congruent because the chords are congruent. And the same thing, it works the other way around. If I know that the chords, if I know that this chord here is the same as this chord here, if they're congruent, then I know that these chords have to be congruent, okay? And so again, the arcs being congruent tells me the chords are congruent, or the chords being congruent tells me that the arcs are congruent. Second theorem we're gonna talk about here is called a perpendicular chord bisector theorem. So that's a lot, but notice it says perpendicular chord and bisector. So what happens is, is that you're going to have here, remember that a diameter is a chord. Um, it's just the longest chord in a circle. And we know, so in this picture, we see two chords here. We have this blue chord, which is known as the diameter, and we have this red chord, which is a smaller chord because it doesn't go through the center. And if you happen to have the diameter, okay, um, intersecting a chord at 90 degrees, notice it intersects it at 90 degrees, well, which means perpendicular. If the diameter by, uh, hits, crosses a chord or intersects a chord at a perpendicular angle, which it does here, that will tell you that it bisects the chord. And therefore, you know that this side of the chord is gonna equal this side of the chord. So HD is gonna equal HF. So those things both have to happen. Okay, in other words, it has to be intersected and it has to be intersected at 90 degrees. And it has to be intersected at 90 degrees by the diameter itself. So here again is perpendicular chord bisector converse. So, okay, now we're like, okay, wait, what's the converse? Remember the converse is the other thing in reverse. So what it's saying, okay, if you happen to have a chord that is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, okay? So in other words, you've got, you've got two chords that intersect, but when they intersect, you notice that one of the chords is split in half. Well, what that's telling you is, is that this chord must then be the diameter. So you have to know that it's perpendicular and you have to know that it bisects the other chord. But once you know that, then you can conclude that this is the diameter. So they say the same things, except in the previous slide, um, your conclusion was that the chord was split in half and the pieces were congruent. In this one, your conclusion is that the, the bisector was the actual diameter. couple more um, theorems we've got to go over and then we'll do some problems. So theorem 10.9 is called equidistant chords theorem. And it basically says again, if you're in the same circle or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent. In other words, this chord and this chord, A, B, and C, D are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. To know if something has the same distance to the center, you have to draw a perpendicular line. So if it's equidistant from the center, um, those two chords are going to be equal. So again, 
um, if we know that this line is equal to this line, in other words, EG and EF are congruent lines, then we know that CD and AB are congruent chords. So let's kind of solve some problems using those, right? So let's start out with, I mean, some of these start out kind of complex. But if you utilize the theorems and the strategies, you're going to figure out that they look complex, but they're really not too terrible. So let's start with this first one. And if we look, you notice that you have two chords, you know, underlying you basically see that you have this diameter and notice that it hits this chord at 90 degrees. Well, so we know that if a diameter crosses a chord at 90 degrees perpendicular, we know that the two chord pieces are equal. So we know that X is going to equal Y. So already we know that these are congruent. Now, um, the five that you see there does not relate to the Y. The five is the length of this little piece right here. So that's five. We know that X and Y are equal. And notice that we know we can see here that this radius here is 13. That means this radius is also 13. So if you notice, what we've got is a right triangle here. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find x, which is the third side of our right triangle, and whatever x is, we can use to find y. So we know that x squared plus 5 squared has to equal 13 squared. x squared plus 25 is 169 x squared equals 144, so x equals 12. And if x is 12, then we know y is 12 also. So x is 12 and y is 12. And so that's how we use Pythagorean theorem in this problem, but we also use the strategies that we learned in this chapter. Um, when we go to, for example, C, let's go to C, because C is a little bit simpler, I think. Notice that C wants to know what the length of X is, right? This side right here. So notice that it says here, we notice that we have this center, and from the center to this chord, it's perpendicular, the center to this chord at perpendicular, notice that these two pieces are congruent. Well, what that means is if those two pieces are congruent, then we know that our chords are congruent as well. So we know that y, which is the length of this blue chord, has to equal 8 plus x, which is the length of the other chord. So we know that. However, we're still not really able to figure out here what x is or y is because we need to know one of those variables. Well, the other strategy that we learned in this chapter is that if we have a diameter that crosses through a chord, right? If a diameter, notice this is the center, so this would be a diameter. If a diameter crosses a chord at this perpendicular angle, it bisects the chord. And so this uh, green diameter or that little radius piece of it basically bisected the blue chord. And so in that case, if the left side is eight, X must also be eight as well. And if x is 8, then we know that y is 16. And so it took a little bit, but we got to the fact that x is 8 and y is 16. And then our last one is going to be b. We're going to work on b. And notice b, you already kind of see, right? You're jumping out, you're looking at it, and you're saying, oh, this is jumping out at me, that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, I may or may not be using the 30, 60, 90 component, um, but I think I, I might be doing that. Um, first of all, again, from this chapter, we know that, you know, this is like a diameter, and if a diameter crosses a chord at 90 degrees, the two pieces are congruent, right? It bisects that chord. Um, so, again, it wants to know the measure of arc AB. Well, so this is like really coming from almost a different chapter, right? Um, if we're talking about the arc length, which is what they're asking for here, then it doesn't matter whether it bisects it or not. What we're really looking at is this angle here. If this angle is 60 degrees, and we know that this piece is equal to this piece, well, we know then 
But if I extend this, this is also 60 degrees. So together, this is a 120 degree angle, right? 120 degrees for this angle right here. Well, this is a central angle, and I know that arc AB is going to have the same 120 degree angle, so, or degree measure, rather. So arc AB is equal to 120 degrees. So that one was kind of interesting, didn't really utilize a lot of the strategies from this chapter or from this section. Um, let's keep going and try to do another problem. It says find the measure of arc CD in the diagram. So again here, we're like, all right, well, we've got arc CD here. We have arc ED here. And we're like, all right, how is all this kind of related? Well, notice that line BD here is a diameter. Whoops. It's a diameter that crosses this cord, this green cord, at 90 degrees. Well, that means it bisects the cord. So it breaks this cord into two pieces. And so we learned in this chapter that the arcs, if two cords are the same, then their arcs are going to be congruent as well. So the corresponding arc, the arc for this piece is here, the arc for this side is here, and that means that basically arc CD is going to be congruent or equal to arc ED. And so we've got 9x is going to equal 80 minus x, and if we just solve for x, we should get our value. So 10x equals 80, divide by 10, and we're like, okay, x is 8. Now again, it wants the measure of arc CD. So arc CD is 9x, which means 9 times 8, or 72 degrees. So the answer for this one is 72 degrees. Last one, here we have a diagram where the center is C. We're told that QR and ST are congruent and they both equal 16. So what we're talking about is these chords, right? And they want us to find CU. So what they're asking us for is this length here, which right now is identified as 2x. So again, remember that um, these lines, these radiuses are crossing at 90 degrees. So these radiuses are bisecting our chords. So if the chords are 18 or 16, I know that each side of the chords are 8. So I've got that. Um, what else do I know? Well, I know that um, these two lines are going to be equal to each other. If those two chords are equal, I know that these two pieces, these lengths between CU and CV, those are going to be the same. So I know that 2x is going to equal 5x minus 9. So if I want to solve, um, since they only want CU, they only want to know this length, all I have to do is figure out what x is. So I didn't really even um, need to know the fact that these pieces were 8 and 8 right? That part didn't really come into play there so much. Once I know that the chords are congruent, I know that these lines, that these lengths are also congruent. So again, I'll subtract 5x from both sides. I'm going to get minus 3x equals minus 9, divide by negative 3, and I'm going to get that x equals 3. So again, I always have to be careful. Is that the answer they want? No, they want to know what cu is. Well, cu is 2x. So 2 times 3, or 6 units. So CU is 6. So in geometry, always, when you get your answer, your X, or your variable, always go back to the original problem and ask yourself, is that the final answer, or do I have to keep going? And that's it. So again, what we did here was we incorporated many things, um, many of the theorems that we learned into these problems. And again, we have to also remember always Pythagorean theorem and other things we've learned before that come back into play on these.